flying this close to the water just because it looks cool in a movie. Unless you're a fake prince trying to impress a princess by fingering aquatic surface tension, there is no need for this behavior. Just calling everyone Roger because you're bad at remembering names. I'm almost certain that both of these guys aren't named Roger. Also, I'll just get this out of the way here, I don't know Japanese. The English subtitles are my reality. I'm sure there's some nuance that the original Japanese language adds, but f nuance. It's a stupid French word that should be pronounced nuance anyway. And I'm not open to other opinions and everyone who disagrees with me is stupid. <laughs> The way this movie deals with a the theme of honorable sacrifice in relation to Japanese culture and customs is brilliant from beginning to end. But I came here to send a giant monster doing giant monster sh so take your removal so we can get on to the good stuff. Taki! Taki! Don't you put those lights on me! Do you know how much well lit CG costs? You think we're made of money? Also, why haven't you already lit up the beach? Was the siren and all the noise coming from the beach not enough to get Taki to show a little initiative? God damn it, Taki! Another distinguishing factor is its tendency to wait for expositional conversations like this to finish before continuing its rampage. Stealing shots from Jurassic Park is always a smart choice, but it's still stealing. Premature taculation. Every time Godzilla opens his mouth, he has some sort of saliva bridge between every opposing tooth, like he's grueling a dense slime webbing. And I don't know enough about Godzilla's paratoid gland to be certain, but those strings have an unhealthy elasticity quotient if you ask me. It's time for some corpse math. Here we see nine decently intact corpses, with another one being dragged this direction for a total of ten. But considering the most possible men we saw in this battle was twelve, and two of them survived, are we supposed to believe that he retrieved every single body in such good condition? This lineup includes the three who were tail jellied? The one who was stomped full force? The guy that was yeeted at least a mile away? I call corpse nanigans. <laughs> False cause fallacies. Choosing to sit in the cold rushing air towards the stern when there's still some room up by the bow protected from the airflow. And sure, war is war, but frostbite on your ears, nothing to trifle with. <laughs> False cause fallacies. Yes, I know we just sit in this. And yes, I know the movie is making a point here, but you begged for us to sit in this piece of perfection, so it's your fault. Begging for splinters by not wearing gloves while clearing wood. <laughs> These pursuers are close enough to see this baby handoff, but not smart enough to know to circle back to the baby when they can't find the mother. Oh good, my favorite part of Godzilla films are all the shots of babies doing the darndest things. False cause fell- okay, I'm done. Thinking you can tell someone's marital status by the way they look. Making someone read the baby's name from this distance instead of just telling them the baby's name or just making anyone read anything. Well, let's see, Koichi. You have tried to make Noriko feel like an idiot for not having a husband and choosing to take care of an abandoned baby and told her she looks like a vagrant. I'd say you're lucky she's only insulted at not ripping off your dick with her free hand. In the 10 seconds from the moment Koichi turned his head slightly, Norga would have had to put the spoon down, completely reposition herself and the baby to a sleeping position and fall asleep. And there's no way he didn't notice this speedy double narcolepsy movement in his peripheral vision. Also, I haven't seen either of you change Akiko's diaper once, and skipping the pre-bedtime change and making a baby sleep in her own stew is definitely sin-worthy. <laughs> Thing I said to the MCU after they said I had to watch their f***ing TV shows to keep up somehow makes its way into the script. Trying to create another Highlander when there can be only one. Kenji is about to tell him that because there are magnetic mines that the boat has to be made of wood, but I don't think he was just disappointed that it was a boat made of wood. I think he was disappointed that it was a piece of sh** boat made out of wood. Having more history lessons about the US and Imperial navies laying out mines in your first 22 minutes than scenes with Godzilla. Thinking age has anything to do with having the kid as your nickname. Kid Cuddy is 40 now, and Daniel Negreanu is still called Kid Poker at almost 50. What I'm saying is, kids. Yeah, 
cocky old guy on the job gets showed up by the new guy on the job that he's recently been making fun of cliche. Finally, some more Godzilla action. There's no way this will just be a dream and- <laughs> Damn it! This convenient strength to throw this man's entire body weight across the entire room to conveniently knock over the pictures that will conveniently take us into a passage of time montage. Opening your eyes during a nuclear explosion. <laughs> Inviting your work friends over for dinner without having the we're not a couple, we're just convenient roommates raising a child with no genetic connection to either of us conversation beforehand. Koichi would be excellent at who's your daddy sits. I believe the three in this case represents the third month, not the number of minutes Godzilla has been in this movie so far. Enough with meaningful human drama and backstory that gives authentic depth to the human characters. Where's my monster go smash match? I'm beginning to wonder if this movie should have been called Godzilla minus Godzilla. Wouldn't be a Godzilla movie without some classic microfilms position. This shows the destroyed boat as having the front of the ship above water. But when we see the actual photo, it appears that the rear of the ship with some of the propeller visible is the part on top. So this sin is either for a terrible diagram designer or a lazy continent Annuity department. Someone suggested a giant shark caused the damage to this boat and was not immediately fired on the spot. And of course, everyone will go on assuming it's the same Godzilla because they know they are in a movie about a singular Godzilla. The U.S. calling this the small stuff might be the most 1940s United States bullshit to ever bullshit in a movie. So let's talk about Japan's plan. In order to fight Godzilla, they sent a tiny wooden boat out with a gun to explode mines in the hope that Godzilla will go after them, and then one of those mines might kill the giant creature that just used a battleship as a chew toy? Oh, and also, it almost works. He was looking through binoculars. How hard could Koichi possibly be pushing himself? Aren't they just in stay and wait mode currently? I guess big balls as a metaphor for courage translates into every language, huh? The movie will say that's the sound of fish surfacing, but unless there are large amounts of air surfacing with them, dead fish coming to the surface will not make a sound. Spoiler alert, there is no air coming to the surface with them. And you've already had this exact conversation a couple scenes ago and decided to stick to your orders and stay put, so what exactly has changed? Why is this argument? Installing an engine you bought in Hollywood onto your Japanese boat. At least that's the only reason I can think that it came with the will fail when you need some escape tension setting. Godzilla rocks the come from below attack with the big boat, but the much lesser known slowly tail them like a dog swimming to fetch a stick strategy for the tiny wooden vessel. <laughs> Koichi will have fear hit him again like it did back in Odo. But then a couple seconds later, he will be firing the gun as if that was never an issue. And I know we've still got an hour and change left, but this moment feels a little anticlimactic. <laughs> Holy sh**, this whole scene is so goddamn badass. Godzilla minus one more. Godzilla just letting this mind roll around in his mouth like he thinks it's an everlasting gobstopper is peak nonsense. Godzilla X Machina. All of these deck sliders survived this and this and are somehow still sliding around when five seconds ago the boat looked like this. Godzilla's healing powers are instant and complete, except for the final part where they are all like, let's leave some visual discoloration here so the audience knows where we've been hit. And after all that, Godzilla leaves? Well, Godzilla showed up and killed every single person except for our heroes. Kind of wild, actually. Mostly that I watch brilliant movies like this only to get distracted by this lamp and wonder why it's not the Studio Ghibli mascot so it and the Pixar lamp can have letters stomping battles where Luxo stomps on them till they cry tears of existential grief and Bleebly lamp stomps on them till they turn into half-animal, half-demon beings that teach you a lesson about family. Did that answer your question? They all perished? What about the guy that was dragging around the bodies? What happened to him? Did I miss the part where he tripped over a dismembered leg and accidentally took someone else's compound fracture through his chest? 
ってもまた何もできなかった。That's not remotely true. Koichi paused for two seconds, but was then able to fire the gun at Godzilla. Just because the gun wasn't effective wasn't a result of Koichi freezing up and not being able to do anything. Why is this confession? I'd give all the sins back if Clarence showed up right now, and this took a hard right turn into an It's a Wonderful Life sequel. Well, sh- I said It's a Wonderful Life sequel out loud, and now I have to live with the fact that I just called that into future existence. A child whose favorite thing is a radish. They have tried both exploding mines and gunfire on Godzilla and have had zero success in even slowing him down. So, what's the next course of action? More explosions. Yeah, it makes all the sense. But instead of turning and destroying the boat responsible for this attack like before, Godzilla pulls a dory and just keeps swimming as if he knows it has a date with a cool set piece elsewhere. Godzilla will obviously cause all kinds of destruction on its path through the city, but its convenient timing on one of its first bouts of destruction involving the exact train Noriko is on is convenient. This movie was made for about 15 mil. That's it. And while you think that might be a sin removal, the sin is that Hollywood would mostly rather make a $200 million trash fire than 10, $20 million potential hits. <laughs> Luckily for Noriko, the falling parts of this train attended the Stormtrooper School for aiming at things. <laughs> Wait, he was able to hear the warning, get a sitter, get all the way there, and find her sitting down in a panic throng of people trying to escape? I'm beginning to wonder if maybe this is all a dream. We've stopped running to look back and watch at the exact same time because I guess maybe we're totally safe now or something. Puberty. Damn it, movies. It takes the same amount of time to tackle someone into a space as it does to push them there, and you know it. Survival instincts alone would make that the go to option, you trickly trauma addict. But at least it's a truly beautiful sacrifice that the movie won't feel the need to undo at the end, right? Right? I'm not 100% sure this would be the Japanese version for the no sin, but I am 100% sure I'm sinning it like it is anyway. <laughs> Movie follows up an outstanding action sequence with 31 seconds of noose position. Awesome. Her possible death is being used as character development for the male lead. That's where. Yeah, I hear you, but you should probably just go ahead and get used to it. And I thought I would bring this information to you on the occasion of your cohabitants passing and the subsequent existential crisis over everyone you're close to dying and your own ineffectual purpose because we gotta keep this movie moving, buddy. Could just be me, but if all the contemporary weapons have had no effect on Godzilla, I'm not sure how throwing private citizens at it is gonna make much of a difference. Kenji will quiet the crowd with his voice away from the microphone, then approach the microphone for an awkward too close to the microphone moment, and the only thing I can think this microphone is here to amplify is his character quirks. Meanwhile, on Kenji the Science He. I know there's like a hundred people in the room, and the plan is ultimately about steering two big ships around Godzilla, but I need you specifically to stay, because I think you're the protagonist or something. This fing guy and his jokes. I'm guessing anyone else who has the appropriate training, but sure, carry on with your rousing speech leads to group fervor to accomplish a task cliche. I totally get it. Asking the guy who just spent the last 15 minutes boring you to death with his plan whether or not he has a plan. As opposed to the boats that are going to lasso the giant lizard with Freon bubble machines? So basically, we're going to get a rehash of the end of Battleship, but with an old plane instead of an old ship? I'm not even sure I'm mad about that. What's wrong with me? Well, then the movie has good news for you. There's a guy that would bring perfect symmetry to the movie's theme by coming back into the picture almost like it was written that way. Kenji said earlier in regards to Godzilla's return. So, how does Koichi have time to write all these letters trying to locate the correct Tachibana instead of just finding a different fing mechanic? <laughs> 
After getting hit here and the previous instances of Koichi slamming his head down on counters and tables, I'm half expecting Dr. Bennett Omalu to show up with concussion protocols, and honestly, I'm going to be a little upset if this doesn't happen. So Forgetting about the flight option of fight or flight. I would be excited about this if I knew what any of it meant and hadn't just heard these words put together for the first time one hour and 24 minutes into the movie. The amount of energy these guys are putting into what is essentially plan C makes me think maybe the first two plans might not work. Thanks for spoiling yourself, movie. It's really nice of Godzilla to conveniently wait long enough to give everyone one last night of family time. Don't ever say Godzilla didn't give you anything, Tokyo. This whole speech wrestling with the cultural sins of war is astonishing. F*** it. Take it off another sit. Sucking as an artist so bad that you have to explain which one is mom. Actually, bugs have an exoskeleton, so technically they got squashed more like water balloons filled with strawberry jam and some twigs. This movie has the protagonist leave their toddler home alone at night to wake up abandoned in the morning because apparently it wants us rooting against them now? Who has to be given the take only essentials instruction? Who's tagging along with extra luggage? Did someone bring some extra reading material just in case? Why wasn't the target spot for the water trap in the actual water before Godzilla got to anyone's shore? Or why wasn't Koichi nearby to maybe take a shot at killing Godzilla before it got closer to the populated city? Rethinking that take the night off with family strategy at all? Movie spends so much time drooling over this plane takeoff that now it has to officially be included in the Star Wars canon. Godzilla has all this room to walk around this farmhouse complex, but specifically chooses the path right through it. What a dick. <sighs> It was already in the sea, motherfucker. Why didn't you make the target area somewhere before it fucking got out of the sea? Tricking Godzilla into going back out to sea the same way you trick a child into eating its broccoli. <laughs> Continuing to say things you think to be true as if they are true. You know what happens when you assume, Kenji? That's right, you let Godzilla make ash out of you and me. Godzilla just stands here waiting to be free on instead of swimming after either of these boats. Just a quick reminder that this is a deep part of the ocean and Godzilla is currently somehow treading water with half his body above water. And if I'm going to believe he has that kind of ability, I'm going to need to see the underwater shot of his giant legs kicking furiously to make it happen. And they are able to time this trap perfectly with the next time Godzilla revs up its heat ray, even though they have only witnessed the heat ray one previous time and would have no way to measure how quickly the next one would be ready to go. Godzilla Minus One will now attempt a Dunkirk moment, despite the scene not needing a Dunkirk moment and the situation not being helped in any substantial way by a Dunkirk moment. What the hell is Godzilla doing while they set all this nonsense tugboats we didn't know were coming but have supplies to use in some sort of way sh**ed up? Blowing a possible title for the sequel. Timing this approach perfectly, despite having no communication with the boats and no way of knowing how and when Godzilla would surface. Also, hitting the G-spot on your first try. Powerful stuff, for sure. But, um, how exactly did this ejector seat work? If you slow down the approach after we get the obligatory photo of the lost love and then a flashback to her bringing in the sheets, he brings his goggles down, pulls the lever, and ejects in seven frames of video, or about a third of a second. Considering most ejection seats take two to four seconds to operate, I need to know the technology you used to have this happen so quickly. Just gonna go ahead and send the fact that they will eventually bring Godzilla back from this death in a future film. This will be harder to explain than the end of Jason Takes Manhattan, but also, I'm all for Godzilla Goes to Hell if that's the route we choose next. <laughs> Being a future version of Rob Schneider's character from The Waterboy. I'm not just mad at the manipulation involved in this reveal. I'm not even just mad that it undoes some of the emotional work of the film itself. I'm fucking mad that she coincidentally timed her regaining consciousness and letter sending so conveniently to coincide with his big moment. Americanizing the title of the movie to Godzilla Minus One when it was so clearly intended to be G Minus 1.0. Smells like, like a used diaper filled with Indian food. This boat is not a boat, Randall. This boat is sadness. Ah! 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 Were you scared? You tell me, who is your daddy? What's you wearing? You look poor. You're gonna need a bigger boat. 
I'm not even supposed to be here today. If the military is listening to this broadcast, they have to destroy this building immediately. Come with me if you want to live. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July. I can't believe that worked! Yeah, art of war. Fight the enemy where they aren't. After all these years, it finally just clicked. But that's not what it means. Really? Not even close. Why does this keep happening to us? <laughs>